What is going on everybody? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing the top five first things I do when I build a new PC. I've just built one recently so I figured it'd be the perfect time to make this video. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and take a look. Number one, updating your BIOS. BIOS is your motherboard's firmware that's used when you first boot up your computer to make any adjustments to the settings or check the system information. Updating your BIOS is recommended to make sure you're running the most up-to-date revision, thus increasing compatibility for any newer hardware while also getting all the security and stability updates. To do so, just grab a USB thumb drive and plug it into your computer. All right, so once you're in the operating system, the first thing you wanna do is prep the USB thumb drive. So go to this PC, right click on the drive and then click format and then change the file system type to FAT32 and then press start. Now keep in mind this will delete everything on the thumb drive, so be sure to remove anything that you need. Perfect, next up, just go to the web browser and type in the motherboard model number. Once you're on the motherboard page, go to support and then you should see an option for BIOS. Download the newest version. And once you have it in your download folder, just click on it and extract the file. Once that is done, just copy the file from the desktop to your thumb drive. And then you should be all set. Now we can go ahead and restart the computer. Now, once you're restarting the computer, you wanna mash the delete key like a maniac. All right, so now that we are in the BIOS, you should see an option to flash it. Ours is under tool, so we're just gonna click on tool and then instant flash. And then we're gonna see the new revision number and click update. Yes. Perfect, now the BIOS has been upgraded. Just click on OK and we're all set. Number two, unlocking ultimate performance mode. Now this is debatable whether it makes any difference at all, but I still like to enable it anyways. Supposedly, this is designed to reduce latency and initial loading time when plugging in devices or coming back from an idle state. This may increase your power draw slightly, so keep in mind if that's something that may concern you. Now, once we are on the desktop, if you go into control panel, go into hardware and sound and power options, you will see we have three current options with the highest being high performance. So to unlock ultimate performance, just open up command prompt with uh, as an administrator. And then all we need to do is just copy in this text. I won't read it out loud, but I will include it in the description. So just paste it and then press enter. Perfect, now if we go back to the control panel and then just go back and open it again. Now we see we have unlocked the ultimate performance mode. So just go ahead and select it and then you're all set. Number three, removing OneDrive and Cortana. I personally never really cared for Cortana and haven't really used OneDrive. And most people I build PCs for never really care for them either. So I usually disable it by default and it cleans up the operating system a little bit. So to do so, firstly open up control panel and then go to uninstall a program and remove OneDrive. Go ahead and click on yes. Perfect. And as you can see, it's gone. Now for Cortana, it's a little bit more tricky, but open up run by pressing the Windows key and R and then type in gpedit.msc. Click on okay. And then go to local computer policy underneath computer configuration, and then administrative templates. Open up the drop down menu and go to Windows components, and then search, and then allow Cortana. Click on disabled, and then apply. And you're all set. Now this will only work for Windows 10 Pro, if you have Windows 10 Home and you would like to do the same thing, I'll show you how to do that now. Open up Run again by clicking Windows and R, and then type in Reg Edit. Click on Yes. Now what you wanna do is go to H key, Local Machine. Go to Software, Policies, Microsoft, and then Windows. Now you might have a folder called Windows Search and that's what we're looking for, but a lot of people might not have that. So we're just gonna go ahead and create it. So just new and then key and then Windows Search. Now, once we have that folder created, you can just go ahead and click on it 
And then inside the folder, we'll click on new and then DWORD 32-bit value. And then type in allow Cortana. Now, once we have that created, just go ahead and click on it. And then in the value data, just click zero. And then okay. And you're all set. You can go ahead and close this now. Number four, adding the recycle bin to the taskbar. Now this is definitely personal preference, although since I've started doing it, I can't really go back. Having the recycle bin on the taskbar is really convenient. That way you can access it whenever you want. Even if you have different applications or windows open, you can always get into it and permanently delete something or move something out if you need to. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Firstly, we're gonna open up a folder and then go to this PC, your local disk drive. And now you can pick either one, either program files 32-bit uh, or just the regular program files. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use the program files for now. And then click on new folder and then type in recycle bin. Open it up and then just drag the recycling bin into here. It's gonna ask you to create a shortcut. And then you just wanna add the shortcut in there. Can you rename it again? Perfect. Now what you want to do is click on the taskbar and then unlock it by taking away the little check mark here and then click on it again and then go to toolbars, new toolbar. And then we're going to go to the folder we just made. So this PC, local disk, program files, and then recycle bin, select folder. Now we're going to have this little text here. So what you want to do is right click it, remove show text and show tile. So we're just going to remove them both. And now we have the little recycle bin icon. So just right click again and then go to view and then large. And then that's pretty much it. Now you can just lock the taskbar. And then there you go. You have the recycle bin on the taskbar, which is really convenient. So one more step is just removing this recycle bin from the desktop itself. So just click on personalize and then themes and then desktop icon settings. And then just uncheck the recycle bin here and then apply. And then you're all set. Now the recycle bin has been moved from the desktop to the taskbar. Number five, running Windows and driver updates. So for this one, Windows will take care of it for the most part. However, I do recommend doing some manually. Making sure all the drivers are installed and up to date could eliminate any compatibility issues, as well as give you the best performance and stability. The way I go about this is typing in Windows update into the search bar, and then it'll check for updates. Right now we have a feature update so I'm just going to go ahead and run that. So Windows already ran some updates, but I'm just going to double check to see if there's any more. All right, so there are a couple more updates that need to be installed. So I'm just going to let it do its thing and wait for it to finish. All right, so now that all the updates are done, we can move on to the drivers. There is one more update for Windows 10, but this is optional. So I'm going to leave it for now. So what I like to install first is the AMD chipset driver. So I'm just gonna type it in Google. And then go over here. And we're gonna download the Windows 10 64 bit edition. Just gonna extract this to the desktop. And then click on install. So the AMD chipset driver is installed and it's asking us to restart, but we're just going to do that after. So I'm going to click close. Next up, I like to go to the motherboard page to see if there's anything that we're missing. So just type in the motherboard again and then go to support and then download. All right. So from what I see, I don't really need anything from here. Most of them have already been installed with the windows update. So I'm just going to go ahead and bypass this and install the graphics card driver, which is the last step. So a similar concept, you just type in the graphics card that you have. All right, and go to the product page and then click on drivers and support. Windows 10, we have the 64 bit one. So we're just gonna go click on download for the latest version. Click on run. All right, so this was the final step. We're just gonna let it finish the installation and then we're pretty much good to go. We're gonna have all of our updates and drivers in place so we can go ahead and start using the computer.
Okay guys, so one more thing I wanted to mention is that when you fully complete all your Windows updates, Windows actually creates a backup folder for your previous Windows installation. But because it's a new PC, we don't really need it anyways. So I suggest just deleting it altogether because that'll free up like 20 to 30 gigs worth of storage. So to do so, just open up disk cleanup. And then just select whatever else you want to get rid of as well. And then click on clean up system files. Now this might take a couple minutes to load up, but um, I'll let you know what to do once it's complete. Okay, so now that it's loading, you can see it's scanning for previous Windows installations. We'll just let that finish up. All right, perfect. Now this window is gonna come up again and you can see um, we have some Windows upgrade log files. We're gonna get rid of that too since we don't need it. This as well. And then this is the one we're looking for, previous Windows installations. As you can see, it's taking up 23 and a half gigs of space right now. So we're just gonna select it and then press on okay. And then delete files. Now it's letting you know that when you delete this, you won't be able to do a system recovery to the previous installation, which is fine. So we're gonna go ahead and click yes. And as you'll see, this is the folder that's gonna be removed. Okay, so now that that's done, we can go back and check the folder. And as you'll see, the folder is now gone. So we just freed up about 23 gigs of space. All right, guys, so there you have it. The first five things I do when I build a new PC. After this, everything should be running pretty smooth. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed it or found it helpful. If you'd like, check out my channel where I posted a video of me building this computer. And yeah, leave some feedback. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you on the next one.